today's Locked On Mavs. The Mavs lock up Maxi Kleba to a long-term extension. There's some Christian Wood talk, and we're getting ready for a Euro, Euro basket game coming up on Saturday on today's Locked On Mavs. Let's go. And this is Locked On Mavs. don't believe you shouldn't be here welcome to locked on mavs this is one of your co-hosts isaac harris contributor to mavs.com riding solo today as nick takes the day off today's episode is brought to you by bet online bet online as you cover the season with more props odds and lines than ever before bet online where the game starts maxi kleba Locked up for the Mavs three years. It was, you know, we all got the uh, the Shams uh, notification. If you still have those uh, notifications hitting your phone from Twitter. And, uh, you know, anytime you see Dallas Mavericks come across your screen, like, whoa, all right, let's uh, check this out. I uh, saw Maxi's name and uh, instantly got super excited about that. Uh, so I'm going to kind of break down that a little bit. And Maxi and just my thoughts on the extension. Talk a little bit about Christian Wood. Uh, and uh, uh, he had a tweet a few days ago. So I want to talk about that tweet and just uh, a little bit of his upcoming season. And then our friend Tim McMahon, uh, who has been in Slovenia, uh, or actually, well, he did go to Slovenia and um, met up with, I think, another f- friend of ours, is Talk. And um, but he's been at uh, Eurobasket and uh, he went on a few pots uh, with uh, Zach Lowe. He was on, uh, obviously, he's on the hoop collective a lot with, uh, with Winhorst and bond temps. And, uh, he had a couple of Mavs nuggets that, uh, I want to, uh, I want to bring up on today's pod, but real quick housekeeping tomorrow. If you're listening to this on a Friday tomorrow on Saturday is the next Euro basket game. So, uh, early morning, if you live on central time here in the Dallas area, then, uh, you might be getting up for, uh, some cartoons or whatever, but, uh, it's pretty early in the morning get a little Slovenia, uh, Belgium action. Hopefully it's not that big of a, uh, a game that, uh, Slovenia can knock them out pretty good, but, uh, it is on you know, ESPN plus you can watch those games after the fact, you know, if you got to sleep in a little bit, uh, you want to watch it and not live, you can always do that. I also want to mention something that I haven't mentioned on the pod. I, I tweeted out about it, but had a few people, uh, reach out to, uh, through DMS, uh, somebody tweeted at me a while back and I just kind of quote tweeted the tweet, but we started a book club back like a month ago and I started it. And then afterwards, some things in uh, my life happened outside the pod, uh, some medical stuff, some, uh, yeah, just not to get into it, but, uh, that kind of, uh, restricted some of my, my outside time from my jobs and, uh, it kind of pushed delay on the, on the book club thing. So a uh, shout out to the people who reached out and was like, Hey, where is this? What's this happening? You know? What happened to it? We're not talking about Mavs history anymore. I uh, appreciate it. I, I love uh, the I love the idea of it. I just had to push pause on something um, because of some unforeseen circumstances that uh, I think are doing a little bit better now. But let's talk about Maxi Kleba. Maxi, thirty years old, gets a three year, thirty three million dollar extension. Now, uh, why extend him now? So Maxi is entering, was entering the last year of his contract to where he was going to make $9 million this year. He was going to be an expiring contract. So whatever we would talk about the Mavs expiring you know, contracts or the expiring money on their, you know, their books this season for a potential trade, because a lot of times expiring contracts are used in some of these bigger trades. Hence, or example, the Christoph Porzingis trade. When you think about how that trade happened, one of the reasons that trade did happen wasn't just the draft picks, wasn't just a young flyer in Dennis Smith Jr. It was also the expiring contracts of Wes Matthews, of DeAndre Jordan at the time. So sometimes in these bigger trades, you need those expiring contracts. When we've been talking about, hey, they got expiring contracts this year for potential you know, deals. It's Christian Wood. It's Dwight Powell. It's Maxi Kleba at $9 million. Well, now Maxi's not in that group because... He gets locked up today. The Mavericks have already announced the extension as, as far as an official public press release. Uh, so it's it's official, official. So three years, $33 million. And 
it so it raises he's been making around eight nine million dollars a year raises that money we'll have to see how the money shakes out if they you know front load a little bit if they you know back load a little bit let's just say it's an even 11 million dollars after that so he makes nine this year then 11 11 11 if we just roughly um i went immediately to hoops hype and some of the player salaries and said all right um, let's look at some similar players around $11 million or that have signed uh, a couple deals or recently in, in the past, I don't know, year or so. And you look at guys like Bobby Portis, you look at somebody like a PJ Tucker, all making around $10, $11 million. You look at a guy like Zubots in, you know, in, in LA for the Clippers. Like I, that's why I look at this deal and I'm saying, which I haven't, I wasn't online a ton today. So I haven't seen a ton of the Mavs fan reaction to this, but I, I would assume there's not a lot of pushback to this because I think it's a really good number. Like you look at what Maxi Kleba brings you from, from a role player and you're like, all right, like what else do you want from a, a 10 or $11 million player? Like this dude, you look at, just look at what he just did in the playoffs. This dude just shot 52% from three in the Jazz series. Like, we are we are we moving past the Jazz if we don't have Maxi Kleber on this? And he had eight threes in that one game. I think it was second most in franchise history behind Jason Terry for most threes in, in a playoff game. You look at that, that Phoenix series, he shot 46% from three in the Phoenix series. He hit 29 total three-pointers in the first two rounds of the playoffs. Like, he was a massive part of the Mavs' success, you know, in the playoffs this past year to against Utah and Phoenix. You look at what he brings at his size at six ten, at you know a, a guy who can, you know, he was just a few years ago he was guarding Kawhi in the playoffs, and I get it, we know how good Kawhi is and how how good of a series Kawhi had, but he can switch on some of these bigger guys, these more mobile fours. He can guard out on the perimeter. We know that he can chase down people in, in, in transition and block shots. We know he can protect the rim at times too. And we know how good of a three point shooter he is that we've just been talking. Call the man, call that guy. I just think it, I just think it's a solid, solid deal. I, you know, I, I don't view it the exact same way when I saw Dorian Finney Smith still, I said, oh, this is, I mean, I tweeted out instantly. I said, this, this is such an underrated deal. It's going to it's gonna look even better once, you know, we get into the playoffs. This, we're going to look back on it and be like, man, that's one of the most underrated moves the Mavs have made recently. And I feel kind of vindicated in that a little bit. I don't view him the exact same way as Dorian because I think Dorian is more, um, I want to say important and valuable. Um to the team like Dorian's starting he has to uh, guard the best players on the other team and he's good at it and he's turned into a good three-point shooter too Maxi's in the same vein of that but he's going to come off the bench like he's going to be a a, a stretch big who can uh, he's a three and d guy but he can also he can guard on the perimeter he can defend the paint he's a good help side shot blocker and I just I, for the cost at 10 or 11 million dollars a year sign me up for that like he has, he is the type of role player we've seen. They've won in the playoffs with him playing a vital role in the team. So I think it's awesome that you locked him up now. Now you don't even have to worry about the free agency part of it. Like you don't have to worry about going into next season saying, well, all right, who's going to offer him the full MLE? Who's going to give him more than 10 or $11 million? There, there could be a team who, who does that because every team is looking for bigs out there that can do what Maxi does at 6'10", that can block shots and hit three-pointers. Like you, you want a guy like that, even though it's like you describe that and you're like, oh, you're describing Anthony Davis. He's not Anthony Davis. He's not one of those dudes. But for a role player, a 3 and D big, those are the type of guys that good teams want. And he fits with Luka Doncic. They have chemistry. They want it at a high level with him. Sign me up for this extension. I thought it was a great move for the Mavs. Really cool for Maxi. I want to touch a little bit, you know, coming up after a break, I want to talk a little bit about Maxi and Dorian just a little bit. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about Christian Wood. This pod is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Full disclosure, I'm recording this in the halftime of Bills Rams. All right. Knocking this thing out during halftime because I got to watch the second half. 
bet online is your place to go if you want to bet on the nfl you want to bet on these upcoming games coming up on sunday this is the place to go if you want to bet something on the ravens hey let's do it ravens playing the jets so uh they better beat the jets find all your latest football de- league developments game matchups news and podcasts including this year's opening week's games bet online is your continue source for all your sport sporting wagering information including live betting esports and scores it's the fastest easy easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events head to the web- website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action bet online where the game starts Doom, 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 doom. I don't even know the music. Dads do the ads, baby. I just have to do the ads today because Nick's not here. So uh, let me do the ads, Nick. Come on. Let the dads do the ads. My wife really enjoyed that. Shout out to everybody who commented that. Oh my gosh, I didn't even say at the beginning. If you're watching on YouTube, you got to comment something below. Anything below? Nick's really going to kill me. I didn't even mention anything about YouTube at the beginning. I think more people watch on YouTube now than audio. Crazy world we live in. All right. It's really cool when you think about Maxi and Dorian in the sense of like how they got how they got to the league and just their kind of like story with with Dallas, right? Like they're both undrafted dudes, totally different backgrounds. And yet they they get these training camp deals, they get these you know, Maxi is playing in Germany. He's this young guy. He has, you know, a couple injuries and stuff, but he has the same hometown as Dirk. They take the swing on him. And it's like, hey, we're going to, yeah, let's, let's bring this 610, you know, German big over. Never heard this before, but it's like they bring him to camp. I remember, I remember when they signed him, just looking up stuff about him, watching some tape on him. It's like, all right, well, he's intriguing. Like, let's see, you know, and, Man, look at this years later. It's so cool to see these stories of Dorian Finney-Smith, Maxi Kleba that have established themselves as undrafted guys, but now they're getting ex- extensions in the league. And it's just really cool. Obviously, you know, Maxi's going to make $11 million over these, you know, next 3 years and Dorian Finney-Smith signing that, you know, that 4-year extension and stuff. Like it's just really cool when you zoom out and look at the um, you look at the the personal side of it and these guys who didn't get drafted now they're getting extended in the league. I just I love hearing undrafted stories. Dallas obviously has a, a has a history with undrafted guys. JJ Berea being obviously one of those, uh, even signing Wes Matthews back in the day to that, you know, max contract. And um anyway, it's just I love both those guys. I'm glad that both of them are locked up in Dallas. I think when you look at We've talked about the roster construction on this team ever since they got Luca, basically. Uh, and then especially after they got KP of it was I I have never been worried about the role players around Luca because I like those guys. I'm confident that those guys fit. It's always been a number two and number three problem over the past three years. They tried to do it with with Christos Porzingis and land their number two guy, and it just didn't work. It's the other guys that I'm like. No, I think they're I think they're great. I think they're fine. Like Reggie Bullock, Dorian Finney-Smith, Maxi Kleba, like these guys, they can fit. They can fit around the best dudes in the league. And those are the guys I'm confident that you want to go to battle with. We just got to figure out who's the number 2 guy on this team. Who's number 3 guy on this team? Are they even on the team right now or is that something they have to go out and figure out over the next year? That's these are questions that I think Dallas um they got to figure that out. But long-term money now we're looking at, you know, two years from now, there's basically going to be like four guys under contract right now. It's like Luca, Maxi, Dorian. I think, there, you know, JaVale has uh, has some guaranteed money in there, a player option. Bertans has a, a little bit of guaranteed money in that, but it's that 2024 offseason that they could be having uh, some money in all of that. So, all right, let's look at this Christian Wood tweet. So Christian Wood tweeted out a few days ago, he basically says, uh, I did have the tweet on my phone, but oh well, shout out to podcast prepping. He basically says, um, when I was in Detroit, D Rose came up to me and told me I'd be an all-star in three years. It's the third year and I'm a pre- prove him right. Hashtag motivation. Um, how do you view that as a Mavs fan? That's what I, I'm curious about right off the top. How do you, when you see a tweet like that, from a player like Christian Wood in the situation that he's in right now, 
How do you see it? Do you see it instantly? I feel like most people look at it as a pause and say, dude, he's so motivated to win. He's so motivated to have this um, just monster year in Dallas. And he has the talent. He, I mean, he definitely has the talent. Can he put it together in a winning situation on, on, a, on a playoff team like Dallas? Or I think there's another side you could look at it too and say, man, is he like, is he just going to be gunning for an all-star spot whenever he's probably going to be coming off the bench? Like, is that, or is it about all winning? Um, I think there's two sides you can kind of look at. It. I think a lot of us, I look at this and I say, oh dude, he's, he's, he's ready. He's ready to win. He's ready to play at the best level that he can play at. But then when I think about it, I, I look at, let's look at what Tim McMahon said on the low post. So I know a lot of us listen to Zach Lowe on the low post pod and you know, he, he brings up on there. They talk about Christian Wood being the big offseason uh, addition for for the Dallas Mavericks. And you know, we've been going off Tim, you know, Tim Cato for the Athletic, uh, his report back, I don't know, early in the summer that Christian was going to come off the bench. And some Mavs fans, man, they really didn't like that. Like, you know, these things that you really don't want to be true, but they are true. And then you just like, we'll try to just discredit it and be like, yeah, you know, we've never seen that before. Um, it's like, all right, Cato's been reporting this. That's why we've been talking about on the pod. And then McMahon goes, you know, on low post and he's confirming that, right? Like, he's like, dude, the Mavericks have to convince Christian Wood to be this six man. Like, can you be a six man of the year type of candidate coming off the bench? Because Jamel McGee's going to start. And like, that's the reality is what it's looking like for this upcoming season. And I think some Mavs fans, it's hard for them to, like, wrap their brain around that because they look at the age of JaVale. It's like, all right, he's older. He, he like, he's kind of defined in that Dwight Powell role. Christian Wood is just, like, endless opportunities. He has all this talent at 6'10". Why isn't he starting all of that? And it's like, this is what Dallas is going with. They have their system there, that starting five. Christian Wood, we've talked about it before. The night I was there. I was there at the draft party night waiting for nico harrison to come out he comes out he gives us strawberries because it's taken so long for the draft and the christian wood trade to go through and he comes out he talks about Jaden hardy but he also talks about the christian wood trade and he says hey this is a prove it year it's it's a prove it year for him to us to prove to us we have to prove to him there's nothing guaranteed we've talked about this on this pod that they haven't anointed him as the next like big man savior in Dallas it's a prove it year for Christian Wood in Dallas and just McMahon how he was talking about it too of like hey he he's got to he's got to embrace this role right and I'm so fascinated by how Christian Wood does embrace this role this season does he like that's a question uh, in general too like does he embrace this role I want to believe he does I want to believe that Christian Wood this is the first situation for him that from Detroit, where he talked to D Rose, they had plenty of time to talk because the team sucked. Um, from his Houston, you know, days, like these past two stops for him, he hasn't won a ton. So now he's going to come to Dallas, a playoff team, and they're going to win a ton of basketball games. And I'm so fascinated to see if he embraces this six man role because it's the thing we've talked about before. It's not about who starts; it about it's about who finishes games. And even McMahon on that pod was talking about he's going to get a ton of minutes. He's going to get points. He's going to get his shots. He just might not start. And it's like, you look at Dwight Powell. He spot started in the playoffs. He started, and then what happened? Maxie Kleber came in. And Maxie was basically their big man. But Maxie didn't start. But Maxie played way more minutes than Dwight Powell. Now, I think McGee is going to play more minutes than what Dwight did in the playoffs. It's not going to be two minutes and then he's coming off and he's only playing like eight minutes a game. I think JaVale's going to, you know, average 15, 16 minutes a game or something like that. But Christian Wood's going to play a lot of minutes too. And if he's okay with playing the, basically the same amount of minutes, but not starting and embracing that six man role, it could be really special for him in a, in a six. Like imagine if he's a six man of the year candidate, averaging 20 points a game and a contract year, that's going to be the best for him on a winning team. If he wants to make the big bucks and get the next big contract, contribute to a top four, top five team in the Western Conference and make the playoffs and embrace that role and show teams, hey, I can, I want to be a winner. I'm going to embrace this six-man role and be the best that I can be on a playoff team. That's the way he makes a, a next big contract. So 
I'm excited for that. Uh, let's continue talking about that and a couple more things McMahon said uh, on the pod and on the Hoop Collective that I'm sure uh, Slovenia fans are not going to enjoy. Coming up next. Okay. Real quick, Christian Wood thing. Tim McMahon also called him one of the biggest X factors in the Western Conference. I agree because we've talked about it on this pod before that he is one of the biggest X factors in the West. Uh, I think <clears throat> we did tier Tuesday uh, back. I don't know. I mean, we've been doing it every Tuesday, but we tiered off. We tried to tear off the biggest X factors in the Western conference. And I put him in my top five. Like, I think I even put him in my like, top three or four in, in the West that he is one of the biggest X factors in the West because of his talent. And you just don't know what it's going to be like this season. But if it hits, and he's like playing at the top of his game with Luka Doncic. Go back and look at some of the best point guards Christian Wood has played with throughout his career. He's never played with a guy like Luka. One, Luka's Luka. He's one of one. But he's never played with anybody like even close to what Luka is as a playmaker, um, a lob thrower, pick and roll guy, all of that. There is a world that Christian Wood excels big time in Dallas. But it's just there's also a world that it doesn't happen, that – some ego stuff gets in the way and he doesn't embrace the six man role. And there's some locker room stuff. And it's just like, he's mad about something like there's that role. There's that path too. So that's why he's one of the biggest X factors in the West. Tim and Zach Lowe also talked about the Mavericks saving the draft picks for a, a later, bigger trade. Um, you know, Zach said, Zach Lowe said that, you know, Dallas has to save these picks. So basically where Dallas is at now, they have two first round picks that they could trade. If they wanted to drop some of the protections on uh, that Knicks pick. They could technically, I think, get up the three first round picks if they wanted to trade those. But Zach Lowe's talking about, he's at some point, Dallas has to make their Drew Holiday type of trade. And one of them pushed back in the sense of, but they don't have their Middleton yet. And that's such a good point because that's what I was thinking of in the moment. It's like, I love Dinwiddie, but he's not Middleton. In, in the sense of Milwaukee went all in, all the draft picks and everything, to get a, a, a Drew Holiday because he felt like the finishing touch because they already had an all-star next to Giannis in Chris Middleton. Drew Holiday was the third player in that, the third all-star to kind of complete that. And they won a title. So it worked. So for Dallas, can they get, is it just going to be this one big swing? And they talked about them saving up these draft picks. Not, this is why we probably won't see that, you know, Nick and, and myself, we debated on this pod about Jordan Clarkson and, and all the jazz guys. Like, would you give up a first for Bullion? Would you give up a first for Jordan Clarkson? And it feels like Dallas isn't, isn't leaning that direction. I mean, McMahon was even talking about Nico, being in attendance for that Germany game and scouting Dennis Schroeder. And, you know, they had this big back and forth on the hoop collective of, you know, McMahon and Bon Temps and those guys debating Dennis Schroeder and Bon Temps making a joke about Dennis Schroeder and saying, if Dallas goes out and signs Dennis Schroeder over Goran Dragic and how big of a mistake that is. And this is where uh, the McMahon, uh, Slovenia fans, if you didn't hear it, I don't know if you want to hear it, but you might've heard the clip on Twitter. This is where McMahon, McMahon said that he had heard that kid thinks uh, Dragic doesn't have much juice left. Um, I don't know how Jason Kidd's feeling about watching your basket front row, but uh, Dragic has some juice left. So that's why I was saying the other day, it, it's going to be a little bit tougher to swallow if they go out and sign one of these guys like a Dennis Schroeder, God forbid, an El Alfred Payton or something like that. Uh, I better watch adding anything. They're probably going to sign one of these dudes and I'm going to eat my words. If they go out and sign another minimum point guard and they didn't sign Dragic, like if they go out and trade for a guy, you're like, all right, kind of makes sense. Or they bring in another, like it, it kind of like you kind of get it. It's like, oh, you kind of had a game plan. But if you just sign flat out another guy to a minimum contract, man, you better be confident that he's better than Dragic. And I just, I just don't know how many other point guards right now on the market that are better than what Goran Dragic is given in Eurobasket right now at 36 years old. Um, so, you know, Dragic is enjoying uh, putting up some uh, good games there and with Jason Kidd sitting front row because, you know, he has to know that. But anyway, going back to what they were talking about, them saving the draft picks and everything. Uh, I think, you know, that's their number one objective, right? Like you have to 
when I go back to that, you know, that Q and A I did with Austin Gruya here on this pod of like somebody wrote in and said, what would you do? What would be your goal for the next three years? If you were running the Mavs, and I think your goal is, I mean, obviously you want to win a, win a title, but your goal is to find the number two next to Luca and you're saving your assets. Jalen Brunson was going to be a big part of that whether it's part of the future or a big part of that trade package, you don't have him anymore. So now you almost have to value your, your draft picks even more because that's your path to getting the number two guy. And you got to do, you got to wait for it. You got to, as weird as it is, you got to thread this needle of being competitive for Luca, giving him a, a good team that to see like, Hey, when you have Luca, anything's possible, but you got to have a, at least a decent enough roster, but you also got to be patient too and save some of these assets for whoever, that next second guy is how can you get how can you take the next big swing that's what dallas has to be asking them asking themselves every single day how do you take the next christoph porzingis trade type of swing to put a guy next to luka Doncic? that's it and it's like save the picks see what young players you can get in here see what other you know if it's expiring contracts if you got to take on another guy in a, in a bigger deal that's the type of move that you got to wait on. And realistically, you have, what, a year and a half, maybe two years uh, before you're getting into that that last year of Luca's, you know, extension. And uh, then it's getting, uh, you know, Mavs fans are losing a little sleep at night at that point. If you don't have the number two and Dallas hasn't been back to the conference finals and all of that. But you know what? We're going to stay positive on this pod. And uh, we'll see. I am so excited to see who they uh who they try to target over the next year or so. That'll be a lot of fun. All right, guys. That's it. My voice is hurting. Go watch the rest of this football game. It's Friday. Hopefully your Friday is good. Maxi Kleb is locked in for three more years after this year. It's a good thing. We could see him uh, throw up the the hand of the, uh, the phone, calling him and all that stuff. But we'll be back on Monday. Hopefully we'll be celebrating. Okay, I can't jinx this. But... Hopefully, we'll still be talking about Eurobasket and all of that. And maybe we can talk about some NBA 2K ratings because right now I'm downloading NBA 2K. And uh, we could talk about some funny things uh, with the 2K ratings because they're always a blast. Shout out to them having Moses Brown as a top five rated player for the Mavs at the beginning of last season. That is true, by the way. Um, anyway, have a great weekend. It's been good. We'll catch you on Monday. Nick and myself will be back. Peace out. Boo!